we cold. are back. Thankfully, the hurricane didn't really do much, but you know, learned our lesson last time. Prevented it. You know, try not to destroy everything in the first swing. So we got out of that. So we are back to our regular scheduled programming. Got some interior goodies going in. We got our Chase Base Hydro finally came in, so we're gonna tuck that guy up in the center console so you won't even see it. It's gonna look like a stock little pull-up. Then, you know, seat brackets, seats, harness bar, steering wheel, Harnesses. all the goods. Oh, old man noises. Matching harnesses for the seats. You know, all the good stuff. Quick release. No, she doesn't come with it. Sliders for the seats, depending on how big or small you are. Currently, right now, the way the seats set up, Chris can't fit in the car. I mean, not fitting it, not like very this. comfortably. I'll be driving like Savio used to drive. So there's ways that we're gonna do to lower this. There's three options on the seat brackets. So it was at the highest point. We're gonna bring it down to the lowest point. We're gonna have to chop off some of the excess of the bolt so the seat can go down lower. So we already disconnected all of our parking brake stuff. So what we're gonna do is uh, take out the center console, get access to where our hydro mounting bracket is so Cricket can copy that bracket and integrate something to hold our hydro. flat surface to work with on this one. I like it. Let us know in the comments if you want me to make some brackets for pull-up mount hydros for 370Zs. Not bad. And our center console is nice and high so that way our reservoir won't stick over. Ideally going to fit right over top of the lid, which is going to be nice. Nice and clean. Can we just like point out before everybody else points out how they were using this as a drift button? Yeah, apparently you drill through it and with the button pushed in place and then you shove a zip tie through it. So the button. You used to have a handlebar from a bike on it. There you go. Not anymore. Not up in here. You're gonna get a sweet Chase Bays pull up hydro mounted properly. Your life's so easy. You're gonna love me. Because the whole inside of this center console will remove along with the lid. So this whole cubby can come out and then he can do all his fabrication, marking, maybe even tack welding. so I can get the seat belts out, then I can install my Graffiti Motorsports harness bar. Bolts right into all the stock bolt holes, which is a beautiful thing. pretty much all of the interior taken apart, I can get the seat belts out. Now between the airbag switches inside of our seat belts, inside of the seats, and inside of the steering wheel, you guys are going to have an airbag light on. So, sorry, but not sorry. Yeah, the resistors work for the airbag one, the seat ones are different. Mm, they wanted a drift car. That's what they're getting. A few lights on the dashboard ain't no big deal. I feel uncomfortable if all the dashboard lights are off. Yeah, it makes you feel like something's not working, right? because you drive BMWs. Dampening adjustment. So, if I drill it straight out of the top, it's gonna rattle against the back glass all the time. So what I'm gonna try and do is bend it over this way so they kind of point toward the inside. Maybe point it towards the back, I don't know. But they work in any direction. Yeah, I can literally turn this thing 180 and it'll still spin. Yeah. Hydro mount. Why does it look like the state of Florida? Because it has to. And like my Freddy Van Halen stuff, so I didn't and bolt it from the back side instead. Stronger? Stronger. Way stronger. This 
there she is. So we have just test fit the chase base in here with the bracket and it actually, I got it the first try. <laughs> really impressed with that one. Everything fits back where it's supposed to. Hydro goes up and down. We are going to put a little shim on the back bolt on here because our master kind of gets in the way back here on the trans tunnel. It's almost touching, but also the nut and bolt job that I did to tie it in together has about a quarter inch of gap. So between that and the trans tunnel, I have about an inch of gap between the back bolt and the plate. Went right in there. I'm really excited about this. And the last hydro we did on a 350C, it was the ASD hydro. And then you cut the little part of your... On the 350Cs, they don't have these buttons here. It's just a piece of plastic. You just notch it out right there and the ASD hydro comes up through there. This one's really nice. It's all leather wrapped and you, you have your ditties right there. So you can't cut a hole through that. So the pull-up hydro works really well, especially when you're using it for street. You know, it doesn't get in the way but it still looks cool. Now we got the interior all put back together. We are gonna fit up our harness bar. I use the spacers from the lower seat belt bolt. And I'll be honest with you, these might have came with spacers and hardware, but um, I don't really know where they ended up. But the stock seat belt bolts, they work in. Joel, well, do you see the sticker in there? Like I was gonna peel the sticker, but it works so good with what we're doing, you know? It says imagine driving it. I can't see that. Oh, it really does. Imagine what it'd be like. Right? So, head on over and get all your parts for your car. DriftHQ.com. Black Friday sale's coming up soon too, boys. I don't know anybody that want a discount anyways, because every $5 you spend, you get a token to win this job. And we can't, so that's two less people, three if you encounter Joel, that can't win this car. So nobody from LZMFG or DriftHQ is eligible to win. It really stinks, because I was really starting to like this car. Proper way to wrap your harness around a harness bar or a roll cage. They come with these eyelets and they can be fixed in the back, but because we have a harness bar, we're not using that. So we're gonna take this out, leave our little latch, whatever you wanna call that. This, you're gonna have to set your general lengths. I'm gonna guess right about there. And you're gonna wrap it up over from the bottom. Pass it through. Get all your slack out. Then pass it back through this way. Cinch it up real nice and tight. And then that same flap, feed it right back through that first hole. Then it can't come loose. Are you teaching them how to do the straps? Yeah. I'm actually gonna have to watch the video now because I still don't know how to do them right and I've wanted him to teach me. Well, that's good because we got uh, three more and you can help. Oh, I, gotta, I gotta at least watch you do at least three more, figure yeah. it out. After watching Chris just do it right now, I have the ones on the sedan completely wrong. <laughs> Safety first, Joel. All right, Chris, one more example for the- th One more. For us slow guys Greg, over here. Greg, are you watching? No, hold on. <laughs> then you do the loop-de-loop -loop and then pull. All right, so you're gonna start with this like that. Yep. Then you go under, through the top loopy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Come on, Craig. Uh, under, through. Well, if you wanna pull some slack out. <laughs> then back up and pull it right now. Ooh. Look at that. So we chopped excess bolt so we could drop the seat down. These come with three mounting points on the back. So we're going as low as we can. We're gonna shove Chris back in the car, in the seat, make sure his head isn't like this. Then I'll try, you know, a normal sized person like me, that's not 6'3", you know. 6'1". Oh, well, you look taller. Tall boy. I mean, it's better. I'm still in it with the little guy. How the little guy fits. No babies, you can't come yet. I got plenty of room. We are 
around the lift now. Um, there's two small Torx bolts that hold the steering wheel cover for your battery disconnected so your airbag doesn't blow up. So now you're gonna pop those clips out. Didn't blow up. Didn't blow up. I didn't unplug it yet. So you're saying if I unplug this, it'll blow up like this right here. Just unplug it, right? Well, your airbags have some kind of capacitor built into them. It basically maintains battery voltage in case you get in an accident and like you knock your battery out and then your car hits a wall. That way there's still some kind of like retained voltage inside your system. So if these wires get crossed or I'm sure there's a lot of fail safes and stuff involved. And I'm sure some people correct me on that. It's just so the airbag doesn't prematurely blow in your face. You could not say that with a straight face. <laughs> I can't. You're not even at the camera. You can't even look at the camera. Look into the camera and tell us that. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it didn't blow up in his face. You love to see it. Yeah. You really do. Yeah, you got a pretty face. You can't afford to get hit by an airbag. Who's really trying to make it blow up, huh? No, what I'm doing is removing our steering wheel buttons. Oh, we're retaining those? Yeah, we got this sweet little thing from GK Tech that um, gives you a mount that mounts these buttons onto the hub, which is nice so that you can still have your radio controls. And so you can control. scroll through your flame map. Sure. I don't condone that. Pops and bangs. Yep. Joel's a big pops and bangs guy. That's why he drives BMWs. I mean, I have pops and bangs, but it has to do with like the suspension and like bad like He's pops bushing. and banged a few motors out of that. Yeah, <laughs> but the exhaust is whisper quiet. So, nice and simple. This little guy goes right onto your hub adapter, and then this just bolts right up to it. So you still keep those right between the spokes of your steering wheel. Well, if we put it behind the quick release, because that's... Yeah, you definitely want it forward, then. It can't quick release. Yeah. That's mint. Just a quick 19 millimeter. A little dash up here that tells you what's lined up, and then there's a little dash on the column, which tells you it's lined up. And the NRG hub has a dot that tells you that that's supposed to be facing upwards. So we're going to go through our paces here. So what you're saying is the horn is going to work. Well, you'll make it work, because, you know, you got to be careful out there. Make sure to torque that down to the right spec. One, one ooga dooga. Oh. There's your ooga dooga. Uh, all right, a little piece of heat shrink, maybe? Because these little exposed guys, I don't want grounding out, because that could potentially either pop a horn fuse or just make your horn stay on all the time, seeing as all of this is metal. Yeah. Well, I couldn't find electrical tape, but I definitely have a lot of heat shrink. So these are some very low ohm resistor terminals. I don't know the ohm reading on them, to be honest with you. But these go into these, which is new technology that came out, because back when I used to buy quick releases, back when I was a boy, they didn't come with these things. You remind me of that one painter guy with the afro. Bob Ross? Yeah. Love like, that guy. When you start getting really careful, you start getting very quiet. Yes. Bob Ross always knows. One more time. Uh, I one? put the two wires out of here together. Again? <laughs> Yo, why are you not wiping his forehead right now? <laughs> if you think about it, this is really Cricket's fault. All right. <laughs> This man builds a whole race car when it comes to putting, making a horn work on a car, it's like, ugh. Yeah, normally we ignore these types of things. Yeah, the first time we ever do this. Who needs a horn? Not me. So, yeah. you hook that up. 50% oh. of the time, kids, it works Check every it time. That doesn't make any sense. I can build you motors and build you race cars. Don't ask me to wire up your steering wheel. No, get your horn to work. The steering wheel part's easy. Yeah. My my horn don't work in my car either. I've yeah. never wired the horn on the vehicle. I can safely say that I don't think I have either. Three millimeter Allen's? Three millimeter Allen's. Wow. We put we put thread locker on them because we play things safely. It's for you guys. Put a little bit extra thread locker on it too because I was waiting for Chris to need them and they kind of rolled around in themselves so extra thread locker. Yeah, definitely sick. Now you get to do the cool thing that all the racers do. So you guys saw the interior bits on the car, hydro install, new steering wheel, new seats, brackets, harness, harness bar. Now we're going to move on to the engine side of it and add them long tube headers and all the good, good, good stuff.
bolt-on motors. All the bolt-ons. All the bolt-ons. See that lowered engine? It's a new mod for the 370s they're doing. Engine drop. It's a lower center of gravity, so it's better for driving. You know, yep. science. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. Yeah, Buy Washington Washington Crow for Washington Donnie. Crow. Every five dollars spent at Drift HQ will help fund this boy some Washington Curl. I got yes. And it's you like might a, win a 370Z. And you might win a 370Z. I hope you win a 370Z. Maybe. It sounds way more fun.